it's me again, it's Kobe with a personal spin. And this time it's just Kovu, because he is evil and the album we listened to was evil sounding. And that album is Arctis, his son's new album, released in 2016 on Candlelight Records and Spine Farm Records. Basically, I'm not sure which one it is, but it lists both of them. Well, what can we say about Arctis? I have to say it blew me away, to be quite honest. It is an 11 track album, running in at about the 40-ish minute mark, the 40 plus minute mark. I'm not entirely sure because I've mostly been listening to it on my mp3 player and um, it doesn't tell you how long the album is but that's a rough guesstimate from what I remember when I played it on my stereo it's quite surprising actually that it's that short because they managed to pack an awful lot of stuff into it don't they yes they do including saxophones and weird Tony poemy things and they even have a few bits like the opening riff that sounds like Opeth to me and on the second song Mass Darkness there's some Iron Maiden-esque twin guitar leads and the album has a mix of sort of black metal -y elements with some sort of jazzy sound experiments and just sort of heavy metal riffage which I think is pretty cool um, it's a cauldron of different ideas all merged oh my glasses together by Isan or Isan I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce his name oh who is the ex vocalist of Emperor which is probably where the black metal elements come from the album contains clean vocals, growled vocals, but it also contains spoken word, especially at the end, and saxophone things. It's not really a solo, it's more like a additional layer of instrumentation, which actually is quite interesting, but he only does it on one song. However, the other songs interesting they 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 have heavy bits and soft bits and weird bits too <laughs> Arctis was produced by James Borgen who has given it a suitably rough sound there is a bit of a lo-fi tombra to the whole affair there's a bit of a raspy unpolished nuance ooh a big word to the whole thing um, Kovu thinks that the drums are a bit subdued they're nevertheless rather cool but they are pushed back in the mix a bit. Sometimes the subtleties of the fills and things can be lost in this horrendous swall of guitar riff, which is not a terribly bad thing actually. It's quite fun because some of the riffs are really really cool especially on the first song which is good because it grabs your attention and it reminds me of Opeth some would argue possibly too much but that's irrelevant to me it sounds cool track four there's a bit more of a keyboardy sound to it takes the album in a slightly different direction. There's a general sort of two-tone feel to the whole thing, much like the album cover, which is black and white. Now that's not 
like a downside to the album. It's it's actually good because it suits the the album's style and the music style. It's supposed to be quite grey, I think is the word. There's there's not really any happy melodies in it or anything like that. So it's supposed to be quite a colourless affair. Which is why it suits Clover so much, because it's dark and evil, even though he's not actually dark and evil, but still, raw. Despite being innovative, or innovative, the album could do with a little bit more precision sometimes. Sometimes it feels a bit meandery, like it's sort of being weird for the sake of being weird, which can be a little bit distracting, but on the whole, the album is, I think, quite exciting. It, it did blow my breath away on the first, second and third listens. I was just like, wow, this is really cool. This is like Opeth, but different enough to be really cool. Uh, I know I keep comparing it to Opeth, but I do feel that it is quite similar to Opeth, and um, maybe that's a downside, but on the other hand, I think it's kind of a good side, especially for the people who don't like the direction that Opeth have gone. Um, I'm not one of those, I quite enjoy Opeth's new stuff, and I also love their old stuff. So... Yeah. Good bits are uh, some, there's some really great exploration, but not so much that it just becomes a noodle fest or a blah blah, blah, blah type of thing. The uh, vocals are really, really well done, I think. There, there's some really, really uh, spine tingling moments in the vocals, especially. Uh, and some of the monstrous riffs. Track 1, 9 and 10 are my favourites. I think they are the standout tracks. Number 1 for its really, really cool opening riff, which, again, is like Opeth. Track 9 for its weird, unusual saxophone element. And track 10 because it's weird. It's just like he clearly ended the album on a interesting pony, poemy experiment thing. Now it's time for the all important poor rating. And what do you give it? Mm, yep, I think I agree. Yep, nine pours, people. Nine pours. I think this is one of the best releases of this year. Uh, it's just because it's so brilliantly thought out. So, nine pours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now, the all important question Can you dance while drunk to it? I'm not sure, but I'd like to see someone give it a go in high heels. I've been Cubby, and this has been Kovu. And we would like to thank you for watching. And please come back to watch another video, which I'll be releasing in a few days. Thanks for watching, and bye. There we go.